This summer sees a massive challenge for Steve Bothwick's England. After being the surprise team of the Rugby World Cup, they face mixed results in the Six Nations and head into a summer of change. Let's take a look at how England are going to a summer tour that includes two test matches in the hardest place to play in the world, New Zealand. Let's see how England will fare this summer. It has been a very strange 12 months for England. Steve Bothwick's side have produced plenty of mixed results in that time. Despite some poor losses heading into the tournament, England finished in third place after pushing eventual champion South Africa to the final minutes. They started the Six Nations campaign with two incredibly close wins before another loss to Scotland in the Calcutta Cup. Despite that, they upset Ireland in the Six Nations before losing to France in the final game. This summer's tour sees England face Japan in Tokyo before facing the All Blacks in Dunedin in Auckland. England's record in New Zealand is certainly not in favour of Bothwick's side. 2003 was the last time that England won a game in New Zealand, with the Rugby World Cup champions beating the All Blacks in Wellington before winning it all. 2014 was the last time that England played a test series against New Zealand and it ended in a 3-0 loss. England came close to winning the first test match, but a late try from Conrad Smith broke their heart. England lost the following two games, including a blowout loss in the final test match. New Zealand has for a long time been the most difficult place to play a test series. The All Blacks have a record at home that no other team in the world can rival. But over the last few years, cracks have started to show. Ireland became the first team in more than 25 years to beat the All Blacks in a test series in New Zealand in 2022. That same year also featured New Zealand's first ever home loss to Argentina. England might have had a poor record against them, but they have gone and beaten against New Zealand. Boswick's side therefore come into this tour with some hope. Bothwick announced the touring side for this summer, the same week as the Premiership final. It is a very different side for England, with the squad not featuring big names like Owen Farrell, Henry Arundel, Manu Tuilangi, Courtney Laws and Kyle Sinclair. All of those except for Arundel have ended their international careers by moving to France. In total, there are six uncapped players heading on tour, including Premiership final try scorer Ollie Slateholm and Harlequin's prop Finn Baxter. There are a lot of positions which need filling, and Saracen's Jamie George has a massive responsibility on his hands as captain. A huge amount of England's squad is very new to international rugby, and so this team will be relying on their experience in what is going to be a difficult test. This summer tour is difficult to preview because Steve Bothwick will be making a huge amount of changes, so let's see what Bothwick could do with this squad. There are plenty of difficult decisions to be made in this team. Let's start at the front where England have a mix of experience and fresh talent. Dan Cole and Joe Marl are likely on their last tour with England, with Bothwick also having players like Bevan Rod and Joe Hayes who he could call on. Loosehead is a more difficult pick because Star War Ellis Genge injured his ankle towards the end of the season. After a brilliant season with Bath, Will Stewart seems the obvious choice at tight head prop, with Kyle Sinclair no longer being an option. The second row seems like the easiest choice for Bothwick, moving forward, considering there is no way that Mauro Toje won't start for England this summer. His partner is slightly harder to pick. Shoulder surgery for Ollie Chesham will keep the Tigers player out of the summer tour, having previously been a key player for Bothwick in England. Courtney Laws heading to Breathe has ended his international career, with Dave Ribbons also no longer an option. With Bothwick's connection to Leicester, George Martin seems the most obvious choice. The back row features a couple of difficult decisions. Number 8 seems an easy pick for Bothwick, with Ben Hill having a brilliant Six Nations campaign. Blindside flanker seems a direct battle between Harlequin's standout Chandler Cunningham South and Exeter Chiefs big man Ethan Roots. Cunningham South ended the season in strong form and was a big reason for Harlequin's surprise run in the Champions Cup. He seems the most obvious choice for England this summer, as a bruiser who can bring the physicality against the All Blacks. Sam Underhill's phenomenal season with Bath should put him in the 7 jersey, with Earl at 8. But Alex Dombrand has been included in the squad, and this could lead to Bothwick moving Earl to the open side. Alex Mitchell secured the number 9 jersey for England in the Six Nations, but his partner is not an easy decision for Bothwick. Only two fly halves were chosen to go on tour, with Owen Farrell now retired from international duty, and George Ford ruled out of this tour with another injury. Marcus Smith has much more international experience than Finn Smith, and seems the obvious choice for Bothwick. But maybe he goes with the man in form, as Finn Smith did just lead Northampton to their first Premiership title in a decade. The Bucks have similarly gone through a lot of changes, so it would make sense for Bothwick to stick with the centre partnership that ended the Six Nations. Manu Tuilangi's international career has come to an end, so Oli Lawrence will hope for a big tour to solidify his place in the team. 
Despite seeing limited action in the Six Nations, Emmanuel Feiwaboso made a huge impact on the tournament. He is one of the first names on the team sheet at the moment and could be set for a massive tour. The Chiefs winger was the second top scorer in Premiership Rugby this season. The other wing seems to be a straight competition between Saints teammates Ollie Slateholm and Tommy Freeman. Freeman has more international experience and will likely be the starter for this tour of New Zealand. George Furbank had a brilliant Six Nations tournament, so seems a favourite for this tour, but don't be shocked if Bothwick opts for Freddie Stewart against the All Blacks as he has often opted for Stewart against more physical opponents. This tour may be focused on New Zealand, but England face a familiar foe first. They play against Japan in a one-off test match, who appointed Eddie Jones as head coach. This is a really good way for England to get used to playing international rugby once again, against a tough Japanese side. The All Blacks will be a changed side as well this tour, as there have been plenty of players ending their international careers after the Rugby World Cup. This will be the first time in a very long time that the All Blacks are without Sam Whitelock, Audi Sevea and Richie Muwonga. In fact, new head coach Scott Robinson has a very difficult challenge picking this squad, particularly as his former side the Crusaders have enjoyed a horrific domestic season. There will still be some monster talent in this side, with Scott Barrett, Rico Iwani, Jordi Barrett and Dalton Papali all set to feature this summer. This summer is also going to feature a lot of new stars for the All Blacks. There are some huge holes to be filled in this team because of all of the post Rugby World Cup exits. They do at least have Borden Barrett returning from Japan, and Damian McKenzie is almost certain to be a starter for the All Blacks. Scott Robertson had a brilliant record with the Crusaders, but there have been plenty of domestic coaches who have struggled at international level. This could be a huge opportunity for England to win a rare test match against the All Blacks in New Zealand. Seeing as they beat Ireland earlier this year, the All Blacks will be concerned about an upset to England this summer. This is going to be the start of a new era for both of these teams, so the series is going to be a fun one either way. What do you think of England's chances this summer? Put your thoughts in the comments down below. While you're down there, hit the like button and subscribe. With that all said and done, it's been your boy John Talks Rugby, and if you enjoyed this video, make sure to click on screen now to see 5 rugby moments that will never be forgotten. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.